This is a tutorial on the muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm. So these muscles are extensors, so it's also called the extensor compartment. So hopefully you've watched the tutorial I did on the muscles of the anterior compartment. So the muscles of the flexor compartment have a common origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the muscles of the extensor compartment have a common origin on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. So these muscles produce extension at the wrist joint, extensions, extension of the fingers and thumb, and supination of the forearm. And all the muscles in the posterior compartment of the forearm are innervated by the radial nerve. So in the posterior compartment, you can separate the muscles into a superficial layer and a deep layer. So first I'm going to talk about the muscles of the superficial layer. And there are seven muscles in the superficial layer. And the tendons, as you can see here, pass through this retinaculum, which is called the extensor retinaculum. And this is a fibrous um, band of connective tissue which holds these tendons in place. So I'll just remove that. And we can take a look at these muscles now. So there are seven muscles that you've got in the superficial layer. And I'm just going to work lateral to medial. So we're looking posteriorly at the um, right arm here. So this side is lateral. So the most lateral muscle of the posterior compartment is this muscle here, the brachioradialis muscle. And this muscle, as the name suggests, originates on the arm. So brachio, brachium is Latin for arm. So it originates on the humerus and it inserts onto the lateral surface on the distal radius, so brachioradialis. So it originates on the supracondylar ridge, the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus, and it runs down the forearm and inserts laterally on the distal forearm, on the distal radius, sorry. So that's the brachioradialis, and what this muscle does is that it can act as an accessory flexor of the elbow. So just working medially, the, the muscle just next to the brachioradialis here, which inserts slightly lower down on the supracondylar ridge, the lateral supracondylar ridge, this is the extensor carpi radialis longus. So this muscle originates on the a little bit below the brachioradialis on the lateral supracondylar ridge and it inserts down here on the um, base of the second metacarpal. So this is the dorsal surface on the base of the second metacarpal. So what this muscle does is it extends the wrist and it also can abduct the wrist. So when it contracts it pulls the wrist back this way and it can also pull the wrist up like this abducting it. So medial to this muscle, you've got the extensor carpi radialis brevis. So we've got the longus here and the brevis here. So brevis in Latin means short. So you get the English derivative uh, word um, brevity, meaning re referring to shortness. So brevis means short in Latin. So it refers to the shortness of the tendon of this muscle. So this muscle inserts originates on the um, lateral epicondyle and it inserts on the base of the second and third metacarpals. So this muscle has the same action as the extensor carpi radialis longus in that it extends and abducts the wrist. So medial to this muscle we've got the extensor digitorum, which, ins which originates on the lateral epicondyle, um, just medial to the um, extensor carpi radialis brevis, and you can see this muscle here. So this is the outline of the muscle, and if we follow it down the forearm, you can see it ha gives off four tendons. So you've got these four tendons coming off the extensor digitorum and they run on the dorsum of the hand and insert onto the base of the middle sorry the middle and distal phalanx of these four digits so the index 
middle, ring and little fingers. So I've just switched over to a diagram to show you this muscle. So you've got this, um, the extensive digit digitorum uh, tendons here and you can see at the dorsum of the hand, so in the, over the metacarpals they actually interconnect. But over the phalanges um, you can see how the tendon splits around itself. So one part of the tendon inserts at the base of the middle phalanx and then it splits around to insert at the base of the distal phalanx. So just to show you that a bit more clearly. So that's the extensor digitorum. So remembering digitorum refers to the fingers, so it's extensor of the fingers. So this muscle extends the index, middle ring and little fingers and it can also extend the wrist. So just going back up to look at the next muscle. So just quickly go recap. So you've gone through the brachi brachioradialis, the extensor, extensor carpi radialis longus, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, the extensor dig digitorum muscle, and next we've got this muscle here, the extensor digiti minimi. <coughs> so this muscle lies medial to the extensor digitorum, and as the name suggests, it's the extensor of the smallest finger. So minimi is Latin for smallest, digiti obviously finger, so it extends the little finger. So again, this muscle um, originates on the lateral epicondyle, and it inserts on the dorsal hood of the little finger, so it extends the little finger as the name suggests. Just next to this one, medial again, we've got the extensor carpi ulnaris. So this is the antagonist of the flexor carpi ulnaris, which you can see just here with its ulnar and humeral heads in the flexor compartment. So this is the flexor carpi ulnaris, uh, sorry, extensor carpi ulnaris, and what this does is it extends and adducts the wrist. So it originates here on the lateral epicondyle, and it inserts on the medial surface of the base of the fifth metacarpal. So you can see that there. So you shouldn't get really too confused about whether um, it adducts or abducts because if you know where it inserts you can imagine the muscle contracting and try to visualize its action so you've got these two muscles you've got the extensor carpi ulnaris and you've got the extensor carpi radialis and you've got the longus and brevis the because they insert on the radial side they're going to abduct the wrist because they insert on the radial side so away from the midline and they're going to pull pull it up this way, abducting the wrist. The extensor carpi ulnaris inserts on the ulnar side, so it's going to adduct the wrist. So the final muscle um, of the superficial layer of the posterior compartment is this little muscle here, the anconius muscle. So this muscle originates on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus again, and it inserts posteriorly on the ulna and on the olecranon. So there are seven muscles to remember here. Um, so again, you've got the brachioradialis, you've got the extensor carpi radialis longus, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, you've got the extensor digitorum muscle, the extensor digiti minimi, the extensor carpi ulnaris, and the anconius muscle. And these muscles form the superficial layer. Okay, so if I remove all these seven superficial muscles of the posterior compartment, we can take a look at the um, muscles of the deep deep layer of the posterior compartment. So there are five muscles in the deep layer of the posterior compartment of the forearm. And these muscles, um, apart from the supinator, which has one head that attaches to the lateral epicondyle, these muscles all originate on the posterior surfaces distally on the ulna and radius and the interosseous membrane. So all these muscles, all five of these muscles are innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve. So this, this nerve is a continuation of the deep branch of the radial nerve. So first we've got this muscle up here, the supinator muscle. So as this name suggests, this muscle supinates the forearm 
and it has two heads. It's got a superficial and a deep head. So it's got one head which attaches to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, which is the superficial head, and it's got this other head, the deep head, which attaches to the posterior aspect of the um, ulna bone. So this muscle wraps around the lateral um, edge of the radius on the shaft, so just below the head and the neck of the radius, and it inserts laterally on the radius. So this muscle supinates the forearm. And there are two supinators of the forearm. You've got the biceps as well. So remember the bicep flexes the elbow and it also supinates the forearm. So two supinators you've got. So that's the most proximal muscle. Now just working our way a little bit more distally, we've got this muscle here, the abductor pollicis longus. So this muscle originates distal to the um, supinator and it originates on the posterior surfaces of the ulna and the radius and also um, it attaches to the interosseous membrane in between. So it winds down the forearm and it inserts here on the base of the first metacarpal. So what this muscle does when it contracts is that it abducts the carpometacarpal joint, so this joint between the carpal bones and the metacarpals, so this thumb joint, it abducts the thumb. So the word pollicis refers to thumb, so in Latin poly, poly, pollicis um, means thumb, so it's the abductor of the thumb. So just distal to the abductor pollicis longus, you've got this muscle here, which is the extensor pollicis brevis. So this muscle originates on the posterior surface of the radius bone, and it inserts on the dorsal surface of the base of the proximal phalanx. So you've got the proximal and distal phalanx in the thumb, and it inserts um, at the base of the proximal phalanx here. So when this muscle contracts, it extends the metacarpophalangeal joint. So this joint here between the metacarpal and the phalanx, so it, ex it extends this joint. And it can also extend the carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. So that's the extensor pollicis brevis. So the next muscle is the extensor pollicis longus so it's this muscle here and this muscle um, originates a bit higher up on the posterior surface of the ulna bone so the, the brevis muscle the brevis counterpart originated on the posterior surface of the radius the extensor pollicis longus originates on the posterior surface of the ulna bone and this muscle has a longer tendon so it's called longus so brevis means short in latin longus means long obviously and this mu this muscle has a longer tendon so it inserts on the distal phalanx the base of the distal phalanx of the thumb of the um so here on the dorsal surface again so when this muscle contracts you can see that it will extend the interphalangeal joint of the thumb and again, it can also extend the carpometacarpal and the metacarpophalangeal joints. So this joint here and this joint here. But its prime purpose is to extend the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. So that's the extensor pollicis longus, because it's got a longer tendon, which inserts more distally. So finally, we've got this muscle here, which inserts originate so more distal to the um, extensor pollicis longus and it's called the extensor indis indices so indices in um, refers to the index finger so it's um, the extensor of the index finger so this muscle originates on the posterior surface of the ulna distal to the extensor pollicis longus and then it inserts into the extensor hood of the index finger so it do you remember that muscle I showed you in the superficial layer, the extensor digitorum, which extends all four fingers? Well, this muscle joins the insertion point of the extensor digitorum um, to, in, to extend the index finger. So there you have the um, five muscles of the deep layer of the posterior compartment of the forearm. So you've got the supinator up here, which supinates the forearm and then you've got the muscles of the thumb and the index finger so you've got the abductor pollicis longus 
the extensa pollicis brevis, extensa pollicis longus, and the extensa indices. So there's quite a lot of muscles in the extensa compartment, but they're all logically named. Um, so have a look through, the, through this tutorial again, and hopefully that will help with things.